This is so stupid, Big yeah, L. This is fantastic, guy. Welcome to How to Watch TV. I'm sorry for this music. It's 8-Bit <laughs> Seinfeld. Wouldn't you want to play a Seinfeld Nintendo game? Was there, was, I didn't think their opening was ever this long. Oh, it's not. It's probably someone did it. Is there a better version did, Was there just like... Dur, 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 dur. The, that was, it was like, like transition music. That's what it should be, is right there. It's just that. Just no, whatever. That welcome awesome. welcome to How to Watch TV. My name's Joel Henderson. Um, with me... I'm Jeremy, beside us. And also... Hi, I'm Big Al. You might know I was going to say Big Baby Al. River. Did you my say... Uh, newest did you, child is right there Welcome to the us. podcast, welcome River. Welcome to the podcast, River. Welcome to the world, River. Welcome yeah. to the world. We're, right. Yeah. How has your first few days been? Has it been good? Oh, good. That's great. Yeah. That's great. You got a job yet? She just. Oh, do, do I need no. to hook up another mic for her? No, yeah. I prefer not to. Okay. She does have a British accent, though. Okay. It's weird. She, does. she was born with a British accent. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. I don't understand. We have we have rebranded and we are now how to watch TV. Um, it's that was anticlimactic. What do you mean? As we are not rebranded. Yeah, there was no build up, man. Come on. You well, I already build said it, up. it though. I already did the. It in the opening. Okay. Said, well, you could have said, like, I mean, right, we're how to watch TV. Okay, yeah. anyway, no, you, after Joel, Joel ruined it. Whatever, just fuck it, move on. Thanks, yeah. Joel. We're how to watch yeah. TV. Uh, still all on Comeuppance Network on iTunes. Just search there. Anyways, uh, we are talking about The Leftovers, episode 104, BJ and the AC. That's what the name is. That was the name uh, of the episode, again. I didn't get it. Well, I didn't see it, man. I didn't see it. And you didn't watch the episode? I, just, I didn't see the title. I missed it. Oh. Oh, I was gonna say I just watched the episode. Oh, really? I literally. Just watched the, wow, that's three. Like, twenty-four minutes ago, I finished it. Oh yeah, I started it at four. Oh, that's why so. you were you were like, oh okay, I'm gonna finish the yeah. episode, email something to myself, and I'll well, be over. I was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like cramming kind of, for a book report. It was, but yeah, no, I just watched it's it. That's kind of what recently. it felt like. Yeah. I, I've, yeah, it's weird to to. I felt like I didn't do my homework, nah. and Joel was my teacher, and he was. Well, then BJ, it was BJ fucking, and the AC. I don't get yeah. it. No, Joel was not going to give me a BJ. No, that's not. Well, we start well, on a production line where they're making baby toys. You, you kind of finished my sentence there, and it was weird the way yeah. it sounded. So don't. All right, moving on. Uh, we we start on a production <laughs> production line for making toy babies, obviously, uh, in a very Breaking Bad style music working montage. Yeah. You know, uh, kind of kitschy music and uh, you know just it the, was the creepy, cool man. point of view style shots and things like that. The way they it were pulling them out of the it was strange. weird. Yeah, the way they pull the baby heads out of the machines and the manufacturing of it, it, it was just, wasn't it wasn't was it like, like the name like a forty. Something like that, yeah. It was like a 40, a 40, yeah. the baby? No, it was, um, well, no, what was it? It was a four. I have it written down somewhere along the way. Not yet, though. Uh, the, we see it all the way through to being purchased, the, the doll. And uh, a lady swaddles the baby and puts it in the manger, and it's baby Jesus. And we see the manger in day and night and then back to night, and the baby is gone. I just said metaphor. Me- yeah. <laughs> oh, there's more I mean, than one we- metaphor. <laughs> people say, uh, yeah. yeah. The song they're playing at the play, the, at the time, he's not the one, or something like that. And the song in the background that was playing, and then the scene where the fucking baby was gone. Yeah. The, was, the words were like, he's not the one, or something like that. I was like, that's weird. Yeah, it was just creepy. It was a weird, the whole thing weird was episode. Just, and it was an eerie cold open, man. It was just like, <sighs> you watch it, and you're like, okay, what's going on? I mean, like, usually what? I get... The you thing know, that guess, struck me immediately like was it, how much time had passed. Like, it didn't feel like it would already be Christmas, but I guess it should well, be. Well, yeah, we wow. talked about that last months. time with the snow being on the ground. But I, I don't know. With this show, like, are you a game of... Excuse me. No, it's okay. We all get nervous on podcasts. He just threw up in a bucket, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say now? Well, we were just... We were just talking about This show, okay, yeah. I, I, I get really excited for like Game of Thrones and like other things. Okay, like this that. is okay. what I wanted to talk about. Okay, wait, are we okay, gonna do okay. it now? Are, are you gonna? Are you gonna like? Can you just let him finish? Let me just yeah. thing? Absolutely. And like, I, I get excited for this show. I do. And like, when I watch it, I'm just like, man, I feel bad. <laughs> like, I just. Oh, it makes I, you feel yes, bad. It's a depressing ass <laughs> show, man. It really is. Just like, does it make you feel sad about life or sad about yourself? I feel sad for these people on the show. I don't. But I mean, like, I don't. It transfers the two. to it transfers a little bit. I mean, you got to take it personally. It affects your mood at the moment when you're watching it. Like, it's different from other shows that I've gotten into. And if it wasn't for the podcast, I don't know that I would be watching it as regularly. Like every day it comes out or a week it comes out, I watch the new one. Like I want it to be good, and like you said, I'm excited to see it every time. But at the end of it, I'm just like kind of left like, what? Okay, 
Like, that wasn't what I expected it to be, and it was just totally different. Like, it wasn't a singular episode this time. Sorry, I don't mean to throw that I out. I mean, but last week's episode was really, like, religion and One character-centric. And, and, and this then week's episode was, like... They just go back to the garden. Anti-religious. Family. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to stop talking at the same time. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you're just British today. All well, of anyways, we go we go to the opening what credits. Was British, and we come back and we see a picture of Patty smoking and uh, a picture. Is that what we saw? Yeah, it was, was, on it was like a board. photograph. It was on smoking? the board, like it reminded me of yeah. the wire. Okay. Uh, yeah, she's at the police station, and the chief asks if she wants something to drink and offers Drano when she doesn't jump at his previous suggestions. Oh my God, that was great. Um, yeah. Tomorrow was a fundraiser for the new library, which she decidedly doesn't give a shit about, and he asks her for a favor. Don't show up with your people and your signs and your stop wasting your breath bullshit. Uh, she says he won't protect her. Or, oh, he says he won't protect her. And uh, it's the holidays, and people want to blow off some steam and relax with their families, and she writes, there is no family. And he's like, what the fuck does that mean? And she stands and takes a pick off the be- the tack board and throws it on his desk and leaves, and it's a pick of his wife. Um, okay, this lady leaves more notebooks laying around than anybody I've ever seen in my life. It's a brand new notebook every time. I don't think she time. left that one. No, she did. She left. I, I watched it on purpose. She tossed the thing down, didn't she? She tossed it on the desk and walked out. And smile, like half smile. Maybe she just picked well, that's it up because on it, you know what she doesn't. You know, you know what the the G, they don't bring their own <laughs> notebooks. They rely on other people to provide them with <laughs> notebooks. Do, okay, see that's messed up. So she's just I, picking you, it up and then putting it back down. It's just I'm, common and all, I'm like, you get something to say? I'm not giving you the fucking notebook. Yeah. yeah. So I refuse. Fuck your to notebook. Care. I'm not carrying a notebook around just so you can communicate with me. You're <laughs> the weirdo, not me. Fuck <laughs> this. So. Um, then Dennis comes in and asks if it worked, and it appears they're trying to get the GRs to show up. And uh, he says, make sure everything is set up at the school for the walkthrough and tell the mayor to be there so he doesn't get any pushback when he arrests these assholes. And he mentions that somebody stole baby Jesus. And, like, the chief kind of even acts like he's wasting his time with that. Like, why the fuck would you even mention that to me? Like, why would Yeah, I why would you even tell me that about right. the baby Jesus thing? Yeah. I mean, like, the whole episode was kind of a metaphor for, like... But, oh, what was it? Okay. Wait. It doesn't make any... Like, I, I didn't... I didn't get that because it was so religious last time. Like, the guy was a priest or whether it was or not. You know what I mean? But well, I he, think that's a big thing with the show, though, is that, like, the struggle with people deciding. It's going to end up being about God, thing. right? I mean. Well, then look at the opening credits. I guess that's true, man. <laughs> now, here, we're, we're micing her up. Right? She's apparently got something to say. So you didn't like She's the cold open to say. She yeah. didn't like the cold open either. Is what I thought it hurt. Probably yeah. not. Well, uh, Garvey calls Tommy and it says it's out of service and there's no new number. Since when does that happen when you break a phone? He just broke. Uh, you know, Horny Wayne just broke the phone in half and dropped it. That doesn't well, immediately make way. the f- this horny number way, out of service. Yeah, what is it? I know it was Wayne. I didn't it's know Horny Wayne. Wayne. Is it? Yeah. Horny they Wayne. call him Holy Wayne. Holy in the show, Wayne. But Wayne he's Horny Wayne. Right. Yeah. Uh, KG anyways. calls Tommy and it says it's yeah. out of service. There's no number. Yeah, How, I mean, who, right, that doesn't that happen. That doesn't just they happen. They don't tell you there's no number. They yeah. don't give you anything. It would just like, go to his voicemail. And he if would, he broke his phone, right? Well, yeah. I guess if it's been a long time. Time, or I don't like understand prepaid, time like in this show. It goes by really no, fast, No, it was a man. cell phone. It was, a, I mean, it was his uh, iPhone. Remember, Horny Wayne just snapped it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, I don't um, know, I guess we couldn't... He's sitting there flipping his uh, yellow smiley phone, and Christine says he'll call when he needs him to. And it's been six weeks uh, since the last episode, which, that's what I mean. Time in this show moves or so crazy weeks, fast. Or is it six weeks from the last time saw I him. talked to him last, yeah. Yeah, but that, they, they the saw phone. him in the last episode. Yeah. He gave him the phone in the last episode. Um, and no, then he, someone no, walked, two episodes ago. Yeah, because the last episode was about the priest. Yeah. Oh, that's that. right. Okay, yeah, sorry. So, But it's still been six weeks since then. Yeah, that's, right. That seems like it should have been like one or two weeks since then, not six. It seems like the time, it, there's no set pattern on that on this one yet. Um, Except for just forward. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, someone walks in with no pants asking, why are you in my dream, Christine? I mean, no yeah. pants. Yeah, See, no pants. I didn't Dick catch and balls. that the first time. I, Straight wanker uh, just uh, in I the screen. I ended up having to, for a reason. I, had had to I feel bad with the actor that had to like, wrestle with fuck? the ugly naked guy yeah. for that scene. Anyway, it reminded me of uh, 
the Carl Pilkington show, the where he was traveling the world and he would see that it would just be there on a beach and it would just stop be moving your fingers. Shirt. I thought it was you making your baby look man. like he's got six toes. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Weird. yeah. So the guy walks in with no pants. Why are you in my dreams? And he calls her by name. And then uh, you walk over the dead. He starts choking her. They're all in white. Tom subdues him and he screams. Uh, the guy screams, I know what's inside you. And he says some foreign word and they leave. I mean, guy's obviously crazy and just saying things. Uh, to me, I immediately thought guilty remnants. You know, is what they're talking about. That was a great. I love the way they threw that in there. The, they're all in white. Weird. And you know what I mean? Um, I thought so, it was Billy Walsh going going insane promoting the new Entourage movie. Yeah. That's what they. Get. That's why I had to go back and watch it over again. Is because I was like, wait, is that? Because that's kind of what he looked like. And then I was like, oh my god, he's not wearing. So pants. KG is what we're calling. Well, I just well, yeah. I, there's that so works. many different Garvey, things huh? in my notes. Father it's KG Chief, whatever. Garvey. So Jill is putting a present under the tree at home, and uh, Chief found the decorations. Grandpa's not theirs. And Jill hasn't talked to Tommy in months, and people are talking are are talking about the baby being stolen, and he's going to replace the baby instead of investigating. And Jill says it's sacred, and he asks if she stole it. Yeah, right then and there, yeah, you do, right? right there. I mean, there was no ands, ifs, or buts. Like, I, I got mean. an actual job to go to, and I won't <laughs> be doing anything about this. Right. And. Uh, yeah, that pretty much ended that. So the cops uh, strategize on yeah, how to arrest. Yeah, he's saying that, but then like the whole episode, everybody was, like asked him about the stupid the the, the Weird. baby. Yeah. Weird. It ended up having to be about the baby. Yeah, like, right. had no choice. So the the cops strategize on how to arrest the guilty remnants for coming on school property, and the mayor is monitoring the chief. Uh, uh, oh, he's she's motioning Afforda. motioning for him, and it was called the Afforda baby boy, twenty inches. And she outright says that all he had to do was go buy another one. Why, why the, the fuck, fuck is everyone in such contempt of his job? Like, why is everybody such an asshole about what he does or what he should be doing? Who the fuck are all these people to treat him like such a dick? He's the chief of fucking police. I get if we get the if we figured you know what I mean. If it's just that he took over for his dad and people don't respect him because of that, he was gifted the job, nepotism, blah blah blah. But Fine, still, but like everybody's a, being really seawardish towards him about what he should be doing. Right. It's it kind of blows my mind. What, I right. mean, what do they expect everybody to do about it? Like his daughter's like trying to get attention. You know what I mean? Like it's almost an attention craving. Do you thing, think they, they know that it was her? But yeah, his. Who's well, he nice. knows. Do you think the mayor know. knows? No. Maybe I that's think he why does, everybody's though. kind of being a dick about it. No. Maybe they know that it would be her. I don't know. Uh, Just a I, I, I guess it could be. Where I like his response, though, where we started talking about this. She says that it's not a real baby Jesus. And he says, so you fucking do it. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And she I mean, asked for a moment Because you know what, sometimes he's, he's a fucking dick back to him sometimes. Yeah. You know, he can be a cocksucker well, sometimes, yeah. too, though. Well, he's probably but I think asshole, it's just man. in self-defense that, sometimes. But, yeah. like, no, I mean, like, I don't know. I, like, she was shitty to him the very first time they were on screen together. When he walked into that meeting, she was shitty to him. Oh, like, yeah. everybody seems to be shitty to him. Like, we've, we've noticed that throughout Everybody the, is contemptive yeah. Throughout the whole, uh, the whole, uh, the whole series so far. And, right, like, he's shitty back to him sometimes. Like, I, I, like, I like how what he tells What else would you do, fun. though? At least like, he's not a pussy. I'm the no. chief of police. You want the new... You but fucking But he's not even it. throwing that stuff out there, really. Well, he's no, just like, but, I got a job to do. He's being even as humble about it. And, uh, you know, I like the guy, obviously. He's a, he's a cool character. You feel for the guy. Yeah. 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 So uh, the I mayor like asks for a moment yeah. after he says that, and uh, here's what you're going to do. Go get the baby, open the box, strip it naked, scruff it up, lie about where you found it. <coughs> she says he needed a win. and uh, He probably did need a public win. Like we just said, though, everybody's shitty to him. There needs a reason for everybody to be like, hey, hey, good job, KG. Yeah, like, so, way I mean, to go, Garvey. Well, I think the, uh, the whole shooting all the dogs thing was a, was a pretty public thing, and then he, he didn't... Uh, yeah, they don't really give you the sense of how public those things are. Well, I mean, it's we live in a public age, dude. I mean, yeah, but hold on, wait a second. Let's be real for a second. And there's it seems not much like it's public. A little, there's a little bit of a small town feel here going on. Like everyone. Yeah, but knows we only know the main six or seven, twelve characters. There's not much public. We don't see like public we saw opinion. The, we saw the event, the 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 first in the first. Well, that episode. was it. But yeah, but, but after then that, the Heroes Day thing where everybody was gathered at. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, but I, they they weren't dicks to him then. Like everybody yes, he knows they kind is of were. everybody he knows is being a dick to him. 
it seems like the whole town, like they just they have no respect for him yeah. for some reason, and they feel like they should tell him what to do. Well, anyways, he goes shopping and he found the baby, and he puts it back after deciding he's going to find the real one, and he puts in a call to find the video feed, and uh, says the dance is still a priority, but he would like to stop dealing with the goddamn baby Jesus. <laughs> And his brakes go out, and the car is just dead. Thoughts? Like I mean, it was that, that's obviously supposed to make you think, oh, he's besmirching the baby Jesus. Well, that, and I think that I think it. Uh, uh, what kind of car was he driving? Was it a Dodge Charger? Yeah, it was, something it was a like big that. recall thing with the cars were doing that. I think it was Chevy cars though. Where they're just dying? Did he just lock up like that? Uh, like the initial, like if you were to turn your car off in the middle yeah. of it being of driving. Yeah. Like, what happens when your car turns off? Your steering wheel locks up. It just up. seems the like he's able to turn up. the wheel. The guy's just got really bad luck, man. <laughs> like, he really does. Like, he, he just, the more and more you think about it, like, he just keeps getting dumped on. Like, it, just man. one thing after another. Like, how much can one person take? Like, you're ready for him to snap. Well, tell us, Big L. How much can one person take? Well, I, I think know, that was, that's like, what the point that him shooting a dog's guess. thing in episode one was kind of like the beginning of that. And they showed like him, and they did. They showed him or taking going like primal. twelve different kinds of. There was all kinds of pill bottles and stuff when he was trying to sleep. He had insomnia that one night. So maybe the dude is a lunatic. That's possible because his dad's a loon too. Well, I think that's part of the reason everybody looks at him kind of weird too, because yeah. his dad's yeah. went nuts. Well, we cut to Tom, and he's at a clinic, and someone asks him if he wants a bullseye so that the creator can find us next time. And uh, which that's interesting that people are assuming there is going to be a next time. And uh, yeah. well, that's just pretty clear that it's a uh, religious. We believe in that it was God the first time. So it's going to be God the second time. And of course, he'll come back. So they're not on the side of the priest who's going. No, there were bad people. Th- this is one of the uh, obviously the hippie types with you know, the stupid target drawn on his forehead. I mean, come on. You say that. And I just want to go on the record right now. I hope they bring Jesus Christ back. I hope this show ends up being about the actual second coming of Jesus Christ. That would be a fantastic show. Like, he actually comes back, and what happens when he comes back? Modern day Jesus? Yeah, like said? actual modern day Jesus, yeah. I think that'd be a fantastic show. That just popped in well, my head. Sorry. I've already found it. I mean, according it. to, oh, <laughs> yeah. I think, I, no, don't quote me here. Uh-oh, are I'm you going to go into Gatlian's 316? No. Johnny 5? No. But like I think the story that I remember being told about the rapture or whatever it might be is that Jesus would have already come and taken those with him. Yeah, he's so thinking after there's, that point, there's going to be a yeah, second one. He yeah. ain't coming back after that. What if he came and he took him? Now he's going to come back and he's going to destroy him with like that. He, he made you know, him angels. For some reason, he so didn't like, have enough room. Jesus yeah. with machine guns, yep. ready to wipe out sinners. Check this out, man. What if Satan won the war? <laughs> and, and Satan, Satan wins and, the war. <laughs> How does Jesus overcome all these odds? He's back for round two. He's better than before, and it's bigger yeah. than ever. You say that, and that <laughs> reminds me of, okay, who's a better Satan? Al Pacino in uh, Devil's Advocate or uh, the one from South Park? Al Pacino. No, the know. one from South Park. I don't, it's the a toss Al Pacino up, yeah. one in Devil's Advocate is pretty terrible. Well, it's no. Oh, the whole character is... Uh, he I hates mean, Pacino, that's what it no, is. No, 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 I do not like, hate Pacino. He, he what are you like talking Pacino, about? Man. We're getting off topic. Can we save on the You're show? the one Sorry. talking about Pacino. Sorry. I just was... I, you said that voice and made me think of the well, devil from South Park. The guy asks if he wanted the bullseye, and Tom says, yeah, good luck with that. And uh, Tom asks Christine what she said to him, and uh, to the guy that was yelling at her, and asks if she talked about Wayne... And uh, you can't talk about the ranch. Uh, and it says it's her fault because she told she told him that she was pregnant with Wayne's baby. And she says she didn't, and it was in his dream. And Tom tells her to keep her fucking mouth shut. Like, he got pretty snippy pretty quick. I thought he was digging her. He was crushing well, her at first. Well, in six weeks with this fucking annoying teenage oh, kid. Oh, I yeah. see. He's just He's, annoyed with could, her. They were doing a good job of showing up that he was le- getting at his wits end, so to speak. You know, like good he was, point. Yeah. Again, time. Was, I don't get on this show. I just expect it to be the next day. A pregnant teenager, like he's dealing yeah. with her. Yeah. Well, she's getting an ultrasound, and the nurse looks weirdly at her the bruises on her stomach and points out the heart of the baby. Uh, Twelve weeks pregnant. And the nurse thinks that Tom beat Christine, and Tom doesn't help that by giving a uh, pretty weak story that sounds made up. <laughs> right? That she looks awful. at Tom's bloody knuckles, which of course he's holding and caressing, and uh, he explains that he had to hit him to get her off of her, or to get off of him off of her. Uh, 
and then basically he's not the father, and the fetus looks normal but needs to do a few tests. And I just put, she's going to call the police. <laughs> you could just tell that it was yeah. one of those scenarios. I mean, how many times has that been fucking done? The, every time, you could tell from the first time she looked at him. Yeah. Just the way she, the way she looked, looked at the bruise. Glanced, it was like, like, oh. Oh, God, here we go. Battered wife. Yep. So Tom wants to go and Christine wants Hasn't him to stay. Hasn't that been beat to death? It, was, uh, it wasn't her fault here. I'm sorry. And uh, he, he leaves and she says uh, he has to mean it. Oh, wait. Let's see. Tom wants to go and Christine wants him to say it wasn't her fault, and he does. And uh, she says he has to mean it, and then he yells it, and he's overheard, and he, he dips, saying, don't tell them anything, and he's running, and he made it outside. Basically. Quite easily. There was no chase, really. There, I mean, there was, was, was a bit a, of a chase, but it was... I mean, for a wife beater? Oh, you think they'd give more of an effort? For, yeah, you think they'd be able to call down and say, hey, guard every exit? Yeah, can you, you know, there's a guy who beat he's his girlfriend, he just out. took off running. Could you block the exit? He I mean, clearly something. hurt this baby. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we go to the douche twins. and You they said are, he what? Huh? He clearly what? Oh, he no, clearly was, hurt this was, baby. Yeah. Uh, we were just being facetious if they had caught him. Like, he, uh, obviously, that would be what they're thinking that he hit her in the stomach where the, it was all bruised and shit. Uh, yeah, so, but see, how did that happen? The big naked dude grabbed her by the throat. She fell. Uh, but did he, like, throw her on the ground or something? Bang her I, mean, I don't table? know. I don't know. Let's go throw a Chinese lady into her. Sorry. Well, why does she got to be Chinese? That was a shout out to Tony Van Doren, racism. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> the douche twins are rapping along with the radio until the chief in the dog dog guy's truck keeps honking and flashing them. I think it was an outcast them. song they were listening to. Uh, Sounded like Big Boy. And they, were, they were flowing, Andre. man. They were dropping I mean, they beat. had a childish song a couple yeah. episode, in the first episode. Um, he asked if they hang with his daughter and asks if she stole the baby out of the nativity scene and says the security footage shows someone in a hoodie and Thing 2 takes the hoodie off and says it's profiling. And that Chief, was funny. Chief asks who, the, who is the smart one. They don't know. He throws oh, it up. That was hilarious. Uh. Yeah. Well, they, I'm just was, calling them Thing 1 and Thing right. 2 now. Yeah. Well, I was waiting for him to say neither of us, but it, they did such a good job of both being dumb as at that moment yeah. that they didn't even have to say it. They're like, uh. So we, we see Jill, and she's trying to let the baby smoke a joint. Uh, the baby Jesus, I should specify. Now, Thing 2 seems to like like Jill. Is it Thing 2? Yeah. The, the one in the, the passenger seat. That's the Thing passenger, 2, right? Yeah. Correct. Well, the one with the hoodie. Dude, my be- yes. the best part of them pulling him he over. Seems, so he's he did like, it he, he, was the one, he was the one she was like. She's awesome. Yeah. He did that for her. Tell her dad. Yeah. To steal it. If he yeah. said there was well, somebody in a hoodie. Right. And when KG's like, uh, oh, God, what does he say? He's like, uh, if you ever want to go off to college and, or you want to go get high in college, you're going to bring the baby back. And they're like, you, they both looked at each other and they're like, damn, we want to go to college and get high. Like, that's their character. Like, but then I can't he's believe... like, we don't get high, sir. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> he interrupted him. He's just him. like, yeah. shut up. Listen, right. shut up. Just shut up. So, um, thing two says not to Instagram that shit. I thought that was pretty good, uh, that the police would be able to track it. And, uh, your dad already knows you took it. And then I think the guy teabagged the baby's head. Yeah, I thought it's... he was going to shit on it for some reason. I thought he was going to pee on it, but I'm pretty sure that he did teabag yeah, it. He just teabagged it. Yeah. Laid its ball. Laid its ball. I had to erase. He, guy shits on the baby's head. Is it weird? I never thought I'd type that sentence. Is the guy shits on the baby's head. There's there's something weird between her friend and Garvey. Oh yeah. Like right? Am I like his oh, friend? Oh yeah. Uh, Jill's oh, friend. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The like dad. there's something weird. Like aren't you getting like that? Uh, what's that like, American no, Beauty with Kevin Spacey yeah, movie? She, oh, I like don't that. know if I've ever seen that. But we she, saw that. We saw in the dream where she I mean, appeared. She was fucking him. him. Yeah. And oh, okay. he was dreaming about it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I definitely think like there's just that overtone. That's, that's going to happen. If not, it's already oh, happening. Yeah. We haven't gotten to the point yet. Oh, yeah. yeah if not that. Love it. Love it. It was hilarious. Wow. Hilarious. <laughs> but we'll talk about that in a minute. Keep going. Um, your dad it. already knows you took it. <coughs> oh, yeah. Uh, the guy teabags the baby's head, and Jill's friend suggests they're going to put it back because her dad has enough on, her, on his plate. And uh, she doesn't agree, and they light the baby on fire for a Viking funeral. Or they're about to. Right. They sing Silent Shout Night. Shout out to Game of Thrones. And Jill doesn't shoot the firing nerf, or the, 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 the lit fire, on fire nerf, nerf arrow. arrow. Right. And she tells them to go fuck themselves. And they chant it. Because right. they're douchebags. Uh, so t- can we use flaming nerf? 
arrows and are LARPing? So. Why not? No. No. Okay. No fire. No fire. Uh, Tom is sitting outside the hospital, and two guilty remnants come stare at him. They hand him a brochure that says, everything that matters about you is inside. And he opens it, and it's a blank, and he laughs. And that was pretty good, man. Crumbles it up and good. tosses it. Can I pause before I can forget to tell him sure. this? Okay, off subject. LARPing section. Dude, well, I was talking to my uncle about that like a long time ago. Okay. I brought it up to him. I mean, I mean no, okay, not a long time ago, but a week and a half we or so. first started talking about it? Okay, no, well, more well, recently. Yeah, well, right. at Mackenzie's birthday party, whatever that was, I brought yeah. it up to the LARPing. I said, so what do you think? You know, I said, how, if, say, per se, would you be interested? He was like, yeah. So I'm at my cousin's wedding this weekend. I, I really hadn't given it a thought in a yeah. while, you know. And I'm sitting there next to him. He, he like, I sit next to him and I say hi, hi, to, hi to his wife and I'm talking to him. He leans over me and so he's like, so I was looking at swords. And I looked at him kind of like, swords? He's like, yeah, for your, for your LARP ring thing. I was like, oh, are you too? So, yeah, seriously, people are, like, seriously interested in it. Anyway, going back. Hold on, wait a second. On that note, we can make four swords for $10 I don't out of care. PVC. We'll, do, we'll talk about that okay. later. Go on. Um, back, back to the leftovers. Well, anyway, see, <laughs> he, 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 he laughs at the, uh, th that there was nothing in there, thought it was pretty clever, throws it, and turns away from him and stares at his phone. He's like, you want me to trust you? Give my life for that girl? Let me know why. You have to let me know why. I want to go home. Like he's just being all emo about it. For Last sure he chance. Was and then he's the like, bus. "Fuck you!" A phone rings, and he answers it, thinking it'll be, uh, you know, uh, Horny Wayne, and it's a woman's voice asking if he lost someone on October fourteenth. Fourteenth. He laughs and you know then says, was? "Good it, one, Wayne." It was a fucking. And he gets on the bus. You know what it was? It was a commercial. It was like a sales. Yeah, it was call. a sales call. Yeah, for but the, it was just like a generic for the, thing. Yeah, for that. The, the, what did you? What did we the call lost, them? Loved, loved ones. Loved, loved ones. ones. Yeah, the right. commercial from yeah. the last episode. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Chief, KG, Garvey, whatever we call them, I don't give a shit. Can we pick a name? What do you KG, think? KG, I, I like Kevin. KG and Garvey. Kevin. Or Garvey, you can call him I like Garvey. Garvey, man. I mean, KG's good. I like okay. that. Yeah, KG. Anyway, man. he swerves to avoid a dog in the road and arrives home to find Meg and Lori on his porch. Invites them in. I thought he was going to blow the dog away. I really thought he because he was in the truck. No, it looked like a, a normal dog. It did, so but you know what? You could see you could see that it had a collar on. But I thought like for like I had this whole scenario go off in my head to where it was like he gets out of the car and he shoots a normal dog. Yeah, yeah. that wasn't like feral. And then like there's this whole shit. Okay. Like the neighbors like there's gonna be a doing? whole shit yeah. storm, right? Blah blah blah. Okay, yeah. anyway, but that didn't happen. So go on. <laughs> uh, so he invites him in and brings him a plate of muffins and asks if they want coffee. And Meg reads. Uh, oh, she reads this from. Uh, Lori, and I wrote this down verbatim. What's her name? I'm sorry, you said her name is Meg? Meg is Liv Tyler. Okay, got it. Uh, Lori is KG's the wife. wife, yeah, yeah. and she, she writes, Kevin, I can't say this to you. I won't just slip it under the door and run away. You deserve to look at me when, I, when it is said, and he, like, turns at her all, like, sad-faced, like, ready to cry, and says, you were a good husband, Kevin, probably a great one. You were there when I needed someone the most. You fixed another man's mess, my mess. You raised Tom as if he were your own, and you loved him even when he wouldn't let you. So Tom's not his kid. Yeah. yeah. So that was a big reveal. Yeah. And, he was and like, she said her mistake. Yeah. She made a point to say Another that. man's mess. Yeah. Another man's mess. Oh, no, mess. yeah, that's what it was, another man's another mess. Another man's mess. Yeah. yeah. And uh, KG says, what are you doing? And she goes, I need you. Well, Meg continues reading. I need you to know it isn't your fault. It's nobody's fault. I was broken, and I tried to fix myself. I tried for you and for Tom and for Jill, but I think I'm supposed to stay broken. Maybe we all are. And then I tried to keep transcribing, but it got a little weird here. And he yeah. was just like, what's in the, what's in the envelope, Lori? Yeah. And I won't you insult you, Kevin, by saying, please stop talking just for a second. And she kept going, and he's like, right. would you shut the fuck up? Right. And he asks what's in the envelope and yells at her to shut up. And uh, he snatches the envelope, and predictably, it's divorce papers. Right. Uh, he asks if they're making her do this, and she signals no. And uh, you don't talk to me for six months, then you walk into our house and give me this? No, no, I'm your husband. We made fucking vows. You want this to? You want this over? You fucking say it, shouts it at her to say it. Like 12 times. But you know what? He's got twice. a point, man. He only did twice. He's like, He's you fucking say it then. Yeah. Don't, don't let her talk you for you. You want a divorce? If it's so it. important yep. that you break your vow of silence and yeah. fucking say it. Uh, and then Jill is watching from behind, and KG looks like an asshole to her. And I know, poor, bad luck. Right? And Jill <laughs> gives Lori a present and walks away, and KG wants uh, Lori and them to leave. So uh, Mary says she didn't know she had a daughter, 
And Lori gave her the present, right? You missed that. She part. already. I know. I mentioned. Oh, it. okay. Lori opens the present, and it's a Zippo that says "Don't forget me," and I genuinely welled up there. That's the yeah. first time I've well, actually almost teared. That's in the show. and I did too. And here's that's the exact word, the way you just put it, because I I, I didn't know tear up. actually formed, no, but I, but I, I felt was that ready. emotion. I was ready to cry. Absolutely. Yeah. That one got me because it was like, damn, your kid. Yep. Imagine your teenage kid actually reaching out and saying that to you, like, "Don't forget about me." Because it seems like, like Lori's fucked. been showing some weakness the past, the last time they showed. Yeah, her, I mean, she you think about it like that. I don't know. It just didn't catch me when I was. Yeah, that was how I was thinking about you it. We were cramming the I was cliff pissed. notes style. So she puts it down a sewer drain. <laughs> well, exactly. That's when after the right after that, yeah. I was I was like, oh, you fucking. And that's what pissed me off, man. I was like, you know what? Die, fuck. Pardon my language. I'm trying to not cuss all episode about it. Sorry. I didn't. I didn't know that we were trying we're to not. avoid that. We're not. I was just trying personally. Because I. I. I just. Because that's just me, and that's just how it comes. Uh, out. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't give a shit. Right. Okay. okay. So anyway, Tom's looking for the maternity ward, and he's got a. He. He now's got has a target on his head. Okay. And didn't they just chase him out of the hospital? Different place. It was. The, a, well, oh no, no. Maybe it was. That's the what same I'm saying. The, for being a wife beater, this guy. But no, this is this where he walked him with the yeah. target on his head. Yeah. yeah, but that's. But he said a little bit later what, how that he was able to do that. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, that's because he's invisible. That. Yeah, because he has that bullshit. Yeah. He's now got a target on his head. I'll get there. He gets into the elevator with a cop Metaphor. who notices he has no shoe. He doesn't have shoes, and says, uh, "He goes, we don't believe in shoes." You know, Tom does. And the cop asks how he ended up like this, and Tom says he was abandoned by his father. Uh, Tom finds Christine. He draws a dot on her head too. He said it makes them invisible. Nobody gives a shit about those yeah. people. The people with the dots on their heads, so they just look past him now. Everybody. Yeah, the cop just thought he was an, a lunatic. That's yeah. all. They they, even... Having the target on your head makes you invisible to normal yeah. society. So he's using like a, that's like a, a it's like a cult. It's yeah. like a yeah, quicker guilty didn't... remnant. Yeah. Okay, I see. You know what I mean? If you, you're like, oh fuck, I don't want to talk to those Jehovah's Witnesses again. Like I get that's it. I get what it. he's okay. doing. He's just popping something. And then I mean, I kind of got it, but I, I, I just. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Like I was, I, it was just hard for me to believe that they just like seriously, like they just chased him out of the hospital. Yeah, and he's yeah. just back. That's what was my life. A different ward, at least he was in yeah. a different place in the hospital. Right. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, he's. Uh, oh, he promises he would protect her, and he'll protect it too. And uh, leave your shoes. And KG is looking at a bronze baby shoe, uh, obviously Tommy's, and he's laying in his bed, Tommy's bed. Uh, he pulls another pick off the bulletin board, and he finds a pick of Lori and Tommy's dad under it. Dad is folded underneath. Yeah. And uh, you could tell that got him. That was pretty coincidental that he goes up and pulls one picture off of the board, and underneath it is a picture of his son and his real dad. Or, I mean, is the, his wife and the Shout first out to the husband wire. or whatever. That board makes me think of The Wire. We haven't watched it in a so while. So whose board was that? That was in Tommy's room. Yeah. Oh. So, uh... He tells Jill he's going to the dance, and he left 20 for a pizza. And uh, what did she hear fucking say it? Oh, she heard fucking say it, Lori. And she wants to know why she was here, and Dad says it's complicated. And she says, let me know when it becomes simple, and puts her headphones back on. You know, you can't help but sympathize with her plight, too. No you shit. Because she's not just being the annoying teenager. She's... It seems like there's genuine reason there. Oh, she's damaged, dude. Yeah. It, I mean, she's hurting. But it, and it's the part about the lighter that I liked is like she feels for her mom. Like she's okay with her mom joining the GNR for some reason. Not GNR. That's not Guns N' Roses. Well, you, it, just, GR. GR. I, just I, I, I think he's right, though. I think like she's like okay with that. Like that's why. That's he why he's bad. getting. I don't get why he's getting so much shit even from her. Well, because she's got to shit on somebody, guy. Her I mom guess. bailed on her. And then well, there's always the guilt of nobody from their family took off. Disappeared, rather, whatever you want to call it. Well, he walks outside and sees Thing 1 walking away from the house, and Thing 2 does the start and stop with the car thing, and they pull <laughs> off, and KG finds the baby Jesus on the front porch. That Jill walks down, and he looks up and says, I found him. That's what it's like to find yeah. Jesus. I, never, I always wondered. Uh, we cut to Tom on a bus, and Christine is talking to a soldier explaining where Dubai and Yemen are. And the two guys are about to meet. They're both named Tom, apparently. And the bus slams to a stop, and they get out, and the soldier all calm motions for Christine to follow him. They see a shitload of bodies laying behind a spilled semi. They are all made by that loved ones company. Yeah, but dude, for yeah. half a second, for half a second. Guilty remnants. 
right? No. Oh, I didn't. thought didn't it was go, the people. I thought it was the people that had come I back. I was like, oh my God, lost moment. Yeah. Oh my God, huge lost moment. Like, why are all, why are they, all these people, like, the I thought fucking that, bodies, the yeah. departed bodies. Oh, you I thought yeah. those were the bodies. Yeah. Yeah. The, the I was like, oh my God, huge lost moment. And then it's just those things. I was like, ah. Oh, no celebrity was, list this time It either, did look pretty way. cool seeing that. Yeah, I know, dude. We, we killed the celebrity list. Yeah, there's no celebrity list, man. They haven't brought it back since. Um... Yeah, they're all made by that loved one's company. And uh, he goes, somebody paid a fortune just to bury that thing. And Tom is looking at them, and I put, they're going to find someone or something, or, you know, someone that they know or knew, and that didn't happen. But it would have been cool if it did. If they walked over and, like, saw somebody that they, somebody that had departed. Right. You know, that they knew personally. Well, she calls for Tom and says, they're all in white. It's just like the dream. And so that made sense. I, you know, red herring of the guilty remnants when they said they were all in white. That, well, that's what yeah, I figured yeah, they were yeah. referring to. And we cut to the dance, and uh, Garvey pulls up, grabs the baby, and goes inside. Uh, he, he, he makes a, you know, he looks over to see the cops sitting in just an unmarked car. Mm-hmm. And the mayor thanks the chief as he walks in. Uh, he addresses the baby Jesus. No one cares. The, like spattered applause. Yeah. I mean, very mild. Like I don't even know that. I'm surprised there wasn't like a. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a right. Dry Crickets, cough. Even though he got his wing, quote unquote. Yeah. Like nobody gives. Nobody gave. They a shit still about don't it. like the guy. So just, the the mayor <laughs> says says in a really phony or pandering to him kind of way, "We're really lucky to have you." Like, what in the fuck did he do to these people? So we cut to him walking through the halls, and he sees Nora, Nora Chief, calling it now. Just that's gonna happen what? long term. I bet he nails the daughter's friend before he nails Nora. Okay. I, I think, think he's nailing the daughter's friend. I yeah. think Nora Chief. Uh, it was so uh, funny because I saw that same chick. She, I, I was like half watching an episode of uh, Boardwalk Empire, and the same yeah. actress that plays the friend or whatever. This dude just grabs her and just cuts her face. Really. Nice. I was like, holy well, shit. She reminds me of the one of the hot chicks bad. from Gossip Girl. Oh, get out of here with your Gossip Girl knowledge. Yeah, so you just got we eliminated. See Nora you just got fired from How to Watch TV. Yeah, right? right. So we cut to Nora. Or Nora's sitting in front of her locker, and her husband's locker was 10 feet away, and it took him a year to notice her. Uh, he says he's sorry about what happened to him, well, to you. And, and she's lit. She's Well, she's she just trapped. found out that he cheated on her, and he yeah. says he cheated on his wife. Just flat out said it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. I was I like, mean, I was like, he was yeah. almost saying that yeah. to you. Yep. Yeah, he was like, saying I felt like I laughed out loud, because I was us. almost feeling like what, he was to saying me? it to yeah. you, like to you personally. Yep. I cheated on my wife. I yeah. was like, ah. Yep. Oh, Mike, I don't, doubt, I don't doubt that he cheats. However, I, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean he wasn't fucking his wife. During the okay, the but thing. we're getting to, we're getting closer to the answer. But it could have been all. the it could have been the girlfriend. Right. I mean, it, it could have been the who his knows daughter's who, friend. It, who knows that who it he, that would yeah. be a cool but tie in. I just want to virtual. If he was nailing her on that for being right. Thanks, we called it. Yeah, that's okay. Um, let's see. Oh, he cheated on his wife, and Nora asks why, and he says, "Is there a good answer to that question?" And she says, "She thinks she just heard it." And uh, they exchange pleasantries. Chief leaves, and Dennis tells him, we can't touch them. They're back five feet from the school property. And he says, hmm, looks like they're on school property to me. They're word against ours, and they start arresting them. Which was funny. Yeah, that, that was, was a good great. line. Well, no the shit. way they were walking towards them, it was kind of weird how they're all, in the guilty remnants are all in white standing still, and, like, the dark forces of the cops were moving towards them yeah. all in the line, too. Like, it was almost the reverse of uh, Heroes Day. Where the guilty remnants were the ones walking Swarmed up. Swarmed them, yeah. No. The guilty yeah. remnants walked in with their signs. And they just stood there. Yeah. And the other team, the people walked up to them. Same way. Yeah, I know. I was saying it was kind of the reverse of that. They were, they were already there, like the people that were at the Heroes Day, and then the cops were walking up to them in this scenario. That's all. Um, I was just kind of the same thing. Except we just didn't see the guilty remnant walk up to where they were standing. Correct. Right. But we also didn't see the people that were standing there at Heroes Day walk up to where they were standing. That was what I was saying. I was switching the, the roles there. The cops were the aggressors in this scenario is what it felt like. Versus the it last time like where Garvey. we saw a group of people and another line of people, it was them coming up. The guilty remnants were being the action ones. And this time it was I the disagree. cops being the, the, aggressive. They, the the, the no, guilty remnant I, walked up and stood on a line. The other people aggressed. They walked up towards but that. No, but the same Garvey way the cops was, walked up towards the guilty I'm remnant. I'm saying, but to, for the confrontation, they walked up there. 
they were the ones coming from a distance at the people that were stationary. And I think what they're trying to say with that is that the cops are now the aggressors, whereas before it, it was the guilty remnants that were coming up and being, they were trying to provoke that that day. Garvey I feel like was, the cop, the, I think by the guilty remnant saying, was they were trying to do the same exact thing they were doing. But he needed that. He wanted them to be there. We found out later that that was all their trick. Anyways, to get them to come by playing reverse psychology, he wanted them to show up, and he knew that they wouldn't let him down, kind of thing. But Garvey he, was he said outright, eh, out "It's just him, it's just their word against ours." Yeah, we, you know, he was going to do that no matter what. So he was the fucking just like they wouldn't not show up there with their signs. He's now oh, being he was their taking role. aggression out. He yeah. wanted them to. He wanted to go beat them right there because he gets sh- the whole episode. The guy gets dumped on, so finally he just like he actually just pulls out his nightstick and goes and beats some people. Yeah, and he just finally them. uses his yeah. power and starts being a That's dick it, about man. it, kinda. Uh, well, anyways, he tells Patty that he thought she would be a human being for once and not show up, and he thanks for not letting me down. And she smirks like that's what she wanted to begin with too. And he asks where everybody else, or where's everybody else? And the the sketchy fat one with the glasses from last episode is uh, walking upstairs with a letter opener slash stabbing utensil, and they are surrounding a house with two people making it out making out inside. And then we see they're infiltrating multiple houses, each with a bag. Uh, what are they? Santa? Sorry, that was just my little. They just had one guy had it over his shoulder, and it felt like you know, with Christmas lights everywhere. Now, were are they, they being reverse Santas? Were they just going into <laughs> random houses? I think were they, they were going just going into, into every house. So, yeah. like the like Meg, they were Meg the wasn't going into Meg's house, Meg. right? Meg isn't that Mary? Mary was Liv Tyler. Yeah, Mary opens a window and door and goes into a house with Lori, and they're stealing family photos. What the fuck? <laughs> And uh, that's what they meant, obviously, by there is no family. So the bags were for the pictures. They they all get into the van, and Lori's going to walk back. I mean, any thoughts on that before we proceed? That was kind of fucked up. Them... The chick set him up, Yeah, the man. fact that they were stealing all those pictures was kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I mean, we are, we're, it's 2014. We should at least have digital backups, right? That can't. It's not going to be this thing where we lost all of our photos. That's going to be really tired cliche i just don't think like that makes any sense in 2000 no i don't think it's going to be no, i don't think that's i think it was just yeah. i think it was just like we can find you we can get yeah. to you we came okay. into your house while you were fucking sleeping you never yeah. knew we were here i i'm curious well, okay i didn't like, think about it like yeah. that that's kind of cool like it was a little bit i can't wait threat. to see what the repercussions are because then everybody's going to come home and be like where's our well, pictures you, or you know wake what? Up. and there was no fucking but there's no there was no cops they were all beating everybody no, nobody saw him do it no nobody's gonna know it was the guilty remnant until they're gonna take and do make some sort of grand gesture. With Put them all up on a billboard like or, a some big billboard like or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even consider that too. That's kind yeah. of a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, and then Garvey played right into that chick's hand because that's exactly what she wanted to happen. Was yeah, the, co- the cops to focus yeah. on them there. Yeah, and she almost set it up for him. I mean, he set it up walking, for her. Yeah, and then she's walking and she goes for the. She walks back to go for the lighter. No. Well, it, she does, yeah. She just says she's going to walk back, and then yeah. we see him, uh, KG, driving, and he's, go- he's going to put the Jesus back, and Matt is there putting a new baby Jesus in its place, and he says, Merry Christmas. And Which was th- creepy again. Didn't, didn't the new baby look like one from the opening credits, the way that it looked like it was trying to reach out to you? You know, the way all of them were just kind of floating away in the opening credits, whether it's young See, I, I bet it was the one from the opening credits. I bet it was the new baby. Like, it was just like this, and it was like it was reaching out to you, whereas the other one was just a doll. When they right. when they you showed know? it, when they showed the person buying it in the beginning, was it a man or woman that they show? I don't remember. I don't recall. It was it? a woman, I believe. It was a woman, yeah. okay. Because we saw it all the way to her taking it out of the box oh, right. and getting it dressed up for that. So anyways, uh, Lori goes back to... Uh, uh, goes back to the sewer drain and tries yeah. to get the lighter and can't reach it and KG is driving and he looks over and the baby's staring at him why would you prop it that way when you go when you get in the car would you ever do that wouldn't you just kind of toss it on the seat in the back seat <laughs> right it would go in the back seat I would worry about catching a glimpse in the rear view and freaking the fuck out so I would probably put it on the floor or just like turn it face down on the seat next to me never would I prop it so that it's looking Dude, at me when I, I mean, go oh, I, I got a funny story about something like that yeah I, I was if I was 17 or 18 or something like that I was still driving one of my parents cars you know and I went to go go somewhere one night and I I was gonna take my dog with me 
my dog was Patches at the time. So I went and got in the car, and then it was like, fuck, I forgot something. So I got out of the car, and I went in the house and got distracted. And, like, I didn't turn the car on or anything like that, but I went back in the house, and, and I ended up not leaving to where I was going for, like, another couple of hours, you know? Yeah. Like, I... I so I went and I got back in the car to leave and turned on the car and that dog sat up in the back seat and I saw her like rise up in the <laughs> fucking rear view mirror. Dude, oh my God, dude, it was never been so frightened in my life, dude. Yeah, I was going to say, you know the what baby, I'm saying? Like, if you saw the baby in the back for the rear view mirror, that'd that, be creepier, like, yeah, man. Yeah, that's creepy, but that dog, that so she, she shat, that up. silhouette come up, coming up from that, I mean, dude, it was the fucking, it was so fucking terrifying. <laughs> Well, but he, I, so I left the dog in the car. It was short, short, you know, like that's what. Oh my god, what a dumbass! It was so fucking hilarious. Well, he does the uh, Kevin does the only logical thing, and he pulls over and throws the fucking creepy baby out the window, and that ends the episode. Do so we wait, have? Do, is this? Is it just me, or does anybody else have no idea where what to expect from this show? I have. It's going to be know. so Jesus related. It's going to make. I, me well, vomit, I don't I think. think so at all. Well, I feel I like think, they're steering into that too easy, too much. But for I think that was even a metaphor of him throwing that baby out the window. At nobody the cares about religion, guy. I, I mean, it could be that they bring it back. In that's that what way. I'm saying. Like nobody cares about religion to the point where it, it's almost the focal point. You know, like two episodes in a row now have been okay, religious. So, so basically, Matt is the guy that's looked at as the crazy guy, but then he turns out to be right. He's the most, I or mean, at least, you know what I mean? Is that what I, you're thinking? I don't know long-term? because he went from uh, he the way he looked in this episode compared to the way he looked at the end of last one he just was like a totally different guy like you could even see it when garvey looked at him he was just like like who who okay matt like what are you do- okay you know like, well he did lose the church yeah. i mean i don't know I, I so he's doing that without the church still he's still he's still manning the jesus booth yeah. and again the show keeps me a hey, it's weird, but it keeps me... I'm going to watch it again, you know, but... I'd like to watch the episodes. I'd like to watch from the beginning until now, before next week, so that I don't have to take notes. Like, I'd like to watch the episodes without n- note-taking involved. You know, to be able to just feel the ep- feel it and let it kind of wash over me instead of nitpicking and trying to make sure I write every detail. Right. Down. Like, maybe, maybe some stuff will come out of... Maybe I'll start to put some pieces together. Um... So I'm trying yeah, because you even any... said before you're writing it, you're watching it as if you're a writer. Yeah. And, and I do that a lot of times too. I have a hard time watching stuff and trying not to dissect it. Like I have to really get into it, like The Wire, you know what I mean, shows like that. But I, I just, I don't know, man. I, I'm going to watch it again. Yeah, I, it's I mean, it's got to go somewhere. I'm back it's for next week. Got to pick up some steam. If right? it's oh well, I mean, I don't think there's any question of going back. I want to see where it goes and where yeah. it turns out, you know. But like, I feel I mean, like it's, it's just steering like feel... away from where I'm hoping long term like i don't know why i don't i don't have anything to necessarily back that up but when i watch the show i keep feeling like each episode lets me down a little bit in terms of the direction of the entire series what do you mean by that though? i like, don't what know what direction do you think that is i don't know it feels like i get the everybody's sad side of it God but almost damn. kind of kind of like what you were saying where you feel feel worse having watched it like not necessarily. I didn't say you. I'm telling you, you said Jesus that, but is coming back to life. It's good. I mean, it's, it. and like, it's well good. done. The tone of it is such a bummer, right? That it almost takes away any of the cool of it. I mean, I know it's not necessarily supposed to be cool, but there are like cool revelations, like that scene on the highway. That was cool when you first pull up to that. When you see all those bodies, or you right. think they're bodies, and right. I, I knew that lo- uh, that loved ones thing was going to come into play. I told you. You're like, you I did. didn't even catch that on the TV. Yeah, well, I, I they the got to be setting the tone for the action. Like, they're trying to set it up. They have to be, because they do a very good job of setting up the individual scenes and the buildup. Like, see, for I example, know, how I, Tommy I, was going I, crazy I, I, this episode, they did a pretty decent job of piling crap on top of him into where he would break. My, but you know what, though, man? It could be another thing where... <sighs> I mean, you know how this dude likes to tell stories, right. you know what I'm saying? It's because it's, it's Linda it really, It could be, it, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, it seems like somebody somebody need, like, needs a win. Like, come on, can we get a win on this show? But the, they, like, she said that. They said that in the episode. Yes, and he like, got the win, and so, it didn't matter. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's just, ever coming. I don't think they're going to get their the win. Is that the metaphor? They don't ever it's get their like, win. Like I said, it's well done, but it's just, the show is just like, eh. It's set in a very bleak world. 
And I, right. get, I get wanting to explore that because it's genuinely fascinating in some ways, the way that like Honora takes the emotion of all of it and then finding out that her husband cheated on her and shit. Right. I expect something different from HBO, I think. Because especially since we've been watching a lot of HBO-based shows recently... Like this is to me, this is different type of thing that rather than what HBO has done or has done in the past or anything, you know. It's like they almost couldn't have done it on ABC. Mm. They could without have, the cussing. I think. Yeah, and the fucking. Like, that's what I was gonna say. Like, is it a better show if it's well, not on HBO? How much of that have you actually seen? Yeah. I mean, without the without the male frontal nudity in the last episode, I mean, could, yeah. how could you I mean, have done without that? Yeah, I mean, we could. It was obviously that. integral to the scene. I mean, like you could you could have done the same exact scene <laughs> yeah. on ABC, but to do what we That's a good point. Tidies. Is it a better show on ABC or NBC? I wonder. I don't know if it's a better show, but the same. Yeah, is it? Whereas, okay, like, so the wire asking, would never be. Or what you're like, asking is, well, does it benefit from being on HBO versus a? a yeah, does it get like, more love? Is the show no? Is the show better because it's on HBO? I mean, have you seen anything like overwhelming? Like, oh wow, yeah, they definitely couldn't have shown that on regular TV. No, not Besides necessarily. So far, F-bombs, so far. so far. And you know what's weird? Like when I see the f bombs and stuff with the kids, with the teenagers, and you know, thing one and thing two, I, I feel like. I kind of get uneasy when they're cursing like that. I feel like it's supposed to be a, a, a teen drama type show and that it's supposed to be, they're not supposed to cuss. You know what I mean? Like it's supposed to be on the CW. Well, cause they show, they show those kids. Like it feels like the OC when those kids are just hanging out and I don't expect them to cuss. And it feel it makes me like, you know how when people cuss in front of people that you just shouldn't cuss in front of? Like, yeah. for some reason, there's those people, and then there's the people that are just like, yeah, fuck it. Uh, uh. Those kids party pretty hard, I, I, man. It, I feel weird when they're cursing because they're seemingly so young. But I know that's what we did. I cursed up a storm when yeah. I was that young. It right. just, I feel like it sh- they shouldn't be cussing on TV. It feels like it would be totally fine as an ABC show, I guess is what I'm leaning towards. I think it could totally exist in a in a censored world. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's, that's well, what, I mean, like that's what I'm saying. Like, really, like it could be on ABC. I mean, like H- these APO series, like you like you kind of expect them to be sort of spectacular, yeah. and this one's just kind of not. Well, I think they were kind of going in an opposite direction of like a Game of Thrones, where you know. Well, what I mean? wasn't. Ex- well, I mean, completely different. Yeah, content, like grounded different. and yeah. just like in the real world and right. a very small town aspect to it, because we still haven't seen the can rest you, of can the Can you world. imagine? Yeah. Much like uh, on Flash Forward, if you guys ever saw that, even the pilot, where the whole world blacked out for like a minute and 47 seconds. I've seen that before. And they all flashed forward six months and saw, lived the the, the six months in the future for that minute and 47 seconds, then came back. And then it's just the show has to do with the repercussions of that? Well, no, it's them building up to that day that they've already seen and some people haven't seen because they died. Anyways, in this one, I want to see the whole world... D- when that happens, when that See, chaos goes down. I thought we were down. getting that with the truck emptied and the thing. I thought we were going to get like an outside. I'm like, oh, here comes the huge lost moment. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, you these mean are, like the, these uh, we're going to have to take the boy or the... Ha- the yeah, you know, the yeah, hatch. Yeah. The, you know, I thought these are the lost bodies. These are the bodies of people that fucking... That actually died, that yeah. Depart- that departed, you know, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm saying that these people yeah, are the, are the people that disappeared. Yeah. I thought that's what we were getting right there. I was like, oh, shit, this shit just got good, really good, you yeah. know? And then it was like, oh, man. Yeah. Well, okay. I think he outright said, don't expect that answer anytime soon of where they went. And I feel well, like... Well, I don't think that that would have been an answer, per se. But yeah, well, of, if it would have told you that, that they didn't just disappear. Yeah, well... You know what I mean? It would have told you that they weren't raptured. You know, if their bodies are still here, then it would have told you something. You would have had more information than everybody's gone. Right, right. So I guess that, it would have been a huge... That would have been a major moment in this show. Yeah. I, I don't know what it's going to take for me to... Maybe I do just need to watch them without the critical eye. But uh, I feel like I'm enjoying it. I feel like it's a little slow moving in certain aspects. I mean, I feel, I, like, I enjoy it because of this. I like each of the... Uh, yeah, I mean, but the show's got to like hold I like up. The, I feel like I like the episode more after we've sat down and talked about it. Most of the time I do, yeah. I don't know. This episode was pretty good. It wasn't great. I always I like, feel I, weird I watching it by myself, man. I, I wish, like, today I was actually thinking, like, I wish somebody else was here to watch this with me. I don't know why. Well, like, you can't talk during it because we got to save it all for this, and we're so ADD yeah. or whatever that we just forget 
before we get back to uh, you know before we got around to that subject. Well, and that's why I no enjoy story. watching the, the yeah, one. Why are you fidgeting? I'm fucking exhausted. <laughs> Is that that's why you're fidgeting? I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to like occupy my mind because I'm yawning and shit, and I'm just. Need a cup of oh, coffee. Are we, are we boring you here? No, I'll send an I'm just to get tired. Coffee. It was a long fucking weekend, man. Well, so I think he's wrapping it up for us. Yeah, I mean, I think we've pretty much wrapped it up. Any other right. thoughts on this episode? No, but we should give a shout out to Amazon.com. Yeah, right. No, wow. actually, uh, what I did want to do at the end of this episode is uh, I wanted to talk to you about a sponsor that is not that doesn't know they're a sponsor yet. Uh, loot, loot Crate. I've passed this on to probably six or seven people already. Uh, you get this box once a month. It's, it's a different shaped and sized box every month. They have different themes, and what it is, is for it's kind of geeky stuff, and it's less than 20 bucks with shipping and everything, and every month you get, you know, this month, for example, I got some, what is that character's it's name? It's Deadpool. Deadpool, Deadpool socks. socks. Adult socks. There's a poster in here that has the Joker and somebody else on and it. And Harley Quinn. Okay, Harley Quinn. Um, it's got... This little Star Wars keychain with Darth Vader head. It was on a it. villain. It was a villains. It, yeah, this month is villains. So there's yeah. a little booklet that comes with it. There's I don't know what this is exactly. I don't know what that is either. It may be digital comics. It, Some, I, I'm I think, not sure. I think it could be something like that. Uh, a cool little Bowser. I want you uh, refrigerator with magnet. Recruitment magnet. And then a comic book that is, uh, what does it say? It's. Of Rocket Raccoon from uh, uh, Guardians, Guardians of the, of the Galaxy. Galaxy, and it's a limited edition Loot Crate exclusive comic book. So if you're into collecting stuff like that, now you may be thinking, is that worth almost twenty dollars a month? Probably not. However, you get a T-shirt too, most months, and the T-shirt alone takes that far over the top. It, when you consider six bucks of it is shipping and handling, and it's you know thirteen dollars. It's a unique T-shirt. It's a it's an individual like T-shirt. You'll one never that we get got it. this. This week is uh is it was uh this month. This month, sorry, it was Jokey, which yeah, is like uh, a mix between the Lo- uh, Loki and the Joker. I'm sorry, you got a bit in your hair. Let me help you with that. Yeah, so that, I mean, so it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, and then I mean, but yeah, I mean, just stuff that you Last can't, you can't get anywhere else. Which was really cool. Last yeah. month was, was the awesome. shit. I would take a transformer, a different Transformers one every month. Send dude. me a text in a few minutes to remind me to look for that shit for you. Okay, I did the other you. day, and you still ignored me. You didn't even I didn't, reply. I didn't even. I don't remember getting it. Anyways, you get check out Loot Crate. Go to lootcrate.com. L o o t c r a t e dot com. They're not even a sponsor, but tell them if it asks anywhere if somebody referred you. Uh, how to Watch TV told you to check out their stuff. Also, go to comeuppance.com for all of the content, all of Comeuppance Network material, uh, Blinkered, Joel Henderson Show, How to Watch TV. Old episodes are there. We say they're house podcaster, but it's How to Watch TV from now on because, quite frankly, you're not doing it right, and we're here to tell you how to watch TV. All these memories in my mind, my mind, my mind, my mind, my mind, my mind. I'm still a secret lemonade drinker, drinker.